today I'm going to talk to you guys about how you can save tens of thousands of dollars in cable damage and downtime. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Guys, welcome back. Today, I'm in a cat lab. And I'm in a cat lab because this is a high use case scenario of random cabling all over the place. This is the type of environment where cables get damaged all the time if the staff just do not pay attention. We have all sorts of stuff that will get pulled from the floor box. It gets attached to amplifiers and etc. We get patient leads and stuff that connect to various places. The cath lab is a worst case scenario for cable management and I'm going to show you guys a few things about cable management that are going to save you guys a hell of a lot of money and time, downtime specifically. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is the basis of cable management and storage of cables. You can tell this is a downed cath lab and I have cables just strewn about the floor. See that? I got stuff thrown over there, just stuff all over back in here. And that just shows me that there is no real good storage solution for the cables. Now what we're probably going to have to put in is some sort of hooks underneath here so that they can wind the cables up and stow them correctly. But right now, you can see they're just kind of thrown on the floor. They're pulling on each other. Just they're absolutely everywhere. So that's step one, proper cable storage. Step two, we got to try and minimize cable yank. And one of the ways that you can minimize cable yank is you make sure that your cables are not twisted together. These ones here is part of a real preventive maintenance, not the inventory maintenance, but a real preventive maintenance that we do like during rounds. We try and untangle cables that are just messed up and just all around each other. You know, and it continues all the way down. So this this is a real big problem because yes, some people will argue that it's not the biomed's job, but at the same time, guess who's gonna have to deal with it when problems come up? It's gonna be us. So I like to try and deal with this stuff and when I find it. I'm not babysitting the users. If anything, I'll take a photo and I'll send it to the user saying, hey, this shouldn't be happening like this. Make sure that when you're finished with a case, you unwind your cables. That way there you can clean them effectively and they can be safe stowed. But this, data cables and stuff just thrown all over the floor, it's unacceptable. So a couple of the other things I want to point out. We want to make sure that there's no yanking on cables. You can see this one here is wound around some other stuff and this one is probably going to get pulled out when they start goofing around with all this. I mean, look at this. This is this is the end of the day type of scenario. People just want to get the hell out. I got some stuff thrown up there. So what we like to do, and this ESU cart here is going to be a perfect example. You see how I got this foot control right here? And this, this mind you, this video is not just for cath labs. This is for all equipment carts. This is for ultrasound carts any type of cart where you have stuff attaching to your main unit you can see how this cable here is being pulled at a direct angle if you can imagine a bunch of conductors and now you yank it down at an angle certain conductors are being stretched while other ones are being compressed and that's what's going on when this type of situation happens you can see that it's being yanked just due to the weight of the cable and that eventually is going to cause breakages and damages up here. So what we try to do is try and curve the cable up just a little bit so that it takes strain right off of this point right here. And what I do is I bring the cable up. You can see that there's a beautiful little hole right there. Put a zip tie through it right there. Now your strain is on the zip tie and on the cord instead of at the connector. This is the weak point at almost every single cable. And if that's not the weak point, this is the weak point. It's always where the soft cable meets a rigid structure. So that's your weak point. And what we try to do is try to minimize those weak points 
by zip tying the cables up and it creates a tiny little service loop. You see that? Same thing goes for the power cords. I mean, we electrical safety this guy with a power cord. So with this cord being stretched really tight like it is right now, it's actually kind of pulling it out of the socket a little bit. So that's a problem. Uh, this power cord here, same thing. We could bring it down underneath this and over to the side and zip tie it down, keeps it from being pulled. Now this cath lab is just a perfect example. I could be here all day. Because look at this. You get all this cable right here and all it does is come over to that little box. This coax cable here should be wound up in a nice neat twirl and it should be fastened right over here because that is the destination right there. I'm gonna come on over here. So this is also a big thing. We have defibs. Now this is the only defib of this type that I have in any of my accounts. But one of the things that you want a defib to be is rapidly deployable. Yeah, that's a whole nother subject right there. But look at how the leads are just kind of thrown up here. This isn't as bad as some of them I've seen, but they should be neatly wound and stowed. Like I push them right up here so that these leads, you can just grab them and use them. Obviously this guy lives on this cart. If this guy lives on this cart with his power brick, this cord right here will come unplugged. See how it comes up and over like that and then down? This guy is coming unplugged. Yeah, see, and people don't even realize it. Bad juju right there. So guys, there's a whole bunch of ways that we can prevent cable damage. But what about when cables are already starting to get damaged? What do we do? Well, one of the things that we can do, as I've shown you guys before, is if you have a cable that's starting to get damaged at the strain relief, like let's say my amplifier cables, which are really fine cables that go to the floor box, Ah, they're all wound up. Otherwise, I'd pull them out for you. But, let's say we have a cable and it's starting to get damaged at the edge. Maybe just superficially, but nonetheless, it's, it's damaged and it's creating a weak point. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take and put shrink tube over that cable, over that connector. And about halfway down that connector, oh boy, this could be one of my perfect examples. This cable right here, you can see it's been stressed right there, right after, I guess you can call that a strain relief, that rubber dongle. So the correct way to do this would be to detach the cable right there and then slide some shrink tube, dual layer shrink tube over it so that it overhangs this rubber dongle and the cable. And what you're going to do is shrink it on there so that it creates a longer strain relief. Because the whole point to a strain relief is to increase the angle of approach from the cable to the connector. Because like I said, the weak point of all cables is going to be at the rigid structure, which is going to be your connector. So what a strain relief is going to do is it's going to decrease the angle of approach. So that might be your angle of approach with a shrink tube on it. But that is a normal angle of approach while they're using it. Because of the weight of the cable and whatever's attached down the stream, that is the normal angle of approach. And like I said, whenever you have conductors that are matched up, when you bend them at an extreme angle, some of them are being stretched and some of them are being compressed. And copper, which is found in every single one of these connectors, work hardens, which means if you bend it back and forth too many times, it starts breaking conductors. So the way that we reduce that is, like I said, you put a shrink tube over the cable, shrink it down, and that gives you a more rigid angle of approach from the cable to the connector. And that is something that I'm going to have to do throughout my cath labs here because there's a lot of cables that are getting damaged. Now, one of the things I want to talk to you guys about, let's see if this guy has it. Ah, okay, so they start getting smart. You can see here that it's got a HDMI out. Well, one of the things that I always want to stress is we never want the users plugging and unplugging items straight to the, the piece of equipment itself. Now, you can easily find six inch dongles, which are either a male to female or a um, basically a cable extension, but they're only about six inches. 
and you're going to want to plug that guy into this device and they, they have some of them that are like three feet long which would be perfect because I would zip tie it right here so the, the female dongle would be hanging right here so they would be unplugging and plugging from the cable and not straight to the machine this is the point where things are going to break either the cable it, let's say somebody yanks it accidentally well guess what that yank is being applied to this board and I guarantee you with all these connections right here that this board is just regular surface mount and it is probably kind of frail I see this with microscopes some of the new Zeiss microscopes I wish I had better video of the breakages that I see there and obviously this ultrasound right here is going to be a very expensive board when this guy breaks so try and get a HDMI or DisplayPort extension and when you have um, DVI cables, DVI are the longer video cables that have uh, fastened down lugs at both sides. Well, I try and take a DVI to HDMI adapter and plug that on your device because then you can run an HDMI connection out of your machine to wherever, to the boom, to the video boom, which is going to be right there. And that allows you, if they move the equipment away from the boom, it'll separate at the HDMI connection. Now, I, I love seeing HDMI on devices. Yes, it's a problem because it doesn't have any fastens. Like DisplayPort has the little fasten paws. HDMI doesn't. You plug and unplug it. There's, you know, it is what it is. But HDMI is cheap. That's why we like using it. Uh, if you break the cable, it's not a huge, huge loss. I mean, at the at the most, let's say it's 60 bucks for a very expensive HDMI cable. I don't feel so bad about that. But this port, HDMI ports, are the weak point. So if you have video connections that come off of your device, try and use a extension, which is about six inches to three feet long. And I would fasten it right here. And that would be the point where my users would plug and unplug from the machine. Try to minimize people constantly unplugging stuff at the, the main board. It, this is the point that will break, guaranteed. And that's you're going to save so much money if you keep people from doing that. So guys, that's just a few points of cable management that are going to save you tens of thousands of dollars. And I'm saying that's for foot controls, hand controls. It's in a cath lab like this all sorts of cables they need to be organized and any signs of stress they need to be relieved because either the cable's too heavy you know if they get it all wound up in a bundle and it's hanging at the connector so we try and extend uh, that point of strain using a strain relief and obviously my favorite is going to be your shrink tube dual layer shrink tube <laughs> I know I, I use a lot of it but because of that, I have a lot less failures than a lot of other people do. That, guys, <laughs> is my pointers on cable management and saving yourself damages on cables. Thanks for watching, guys.